In this quick start lesson, we'll dive into Protopie's two very powerful features, range and chain. Previously, we demonstrated how chain connects various interactions to enable playback for our music app, while range can respond to a range of values like swiping to switch between songs. Although both chain and range activate responses when certain conditions are met, they function in slightly different ways. We'll create a website with parallax and scroll events to demonstrate these differences. Our demo website has two sections, the hero section with a parallax effect and the second section where content appears when you scroll to a certain position. By the end, you'll know which trigger to use depending on your specific use case. Starting with the hero section, we'll use a parallax effect to create the illusion of depth by moving each element at a different pace and time as we scroll in 2D. The rule of thumb is to move the furthest objects the least, mimicking real-world physics. This requires preparing assets, such as pictures, as separate layers. We've divided the picture into three layers for this effect. The man and ground, close distance, the mountain, medium distance, and the sky, long distance. To add some depth, we've placed the explore text layer between the man and mountain layers. To create a scroll view, start by drawing a scroll container that covers the entire screen. Then, drag all the content that needs to scroll into this container, which in this case is everything. Let's do a quick preview. In just a few clicks, we've created a scrollable website. We're done with step one. To achieve the parallax effect, the man, explore text, mountain, and sky layers should move at different speeds. Move all the layers out of the scroll container except for the man layer, which should move at the same speed as the scroll. Let's preview our website again. Now try scrolling. As expected, only the man layer moves with the scroll while the other elements remain static. So, we want to create a visual effect where certain elements move at a slower pace, scrolling together with the main view. To achieve this, we'll use the chain trigger. A chain trigger allows one property to control another, with changes happening simultaneously. By chaining the movement of the layers outside the scroll container to the scroll interaction, we can create the illusion that they are scrolling with the main view, but at a slower pace. To create a smooth scrolling experience, we can use a chain trigger and move response. First, add the chain trigger to the scroll container and select its scroll property. Then, add a move response to the explore text layer. For the scroll property of the container, specify the range of 0 and 900. This covers the scroll distance from the hero section to the second section. To position the explore text layer, we leave the X position empty since it doesn't move horizontally. As for the Y position, we start with its current position of 250. Since this layer moves up at a slightly slower pace than the main view, we subtract 850 from the starting position of 250 to get a final position of negative 600. This means the explore text layer will move up by 850 pixels as the user scrolls from the hero section to the second section. Let's preview the changes we made. You'll notice that the explore text layer now moves at a slightly slower pace than the main view. To complete the parallax effect, we need to apply the same steps for the other elements, the mountain and the sky layers. Basically, we just need to repeat the same steps, add chain triggers to the scroll container, and select the scroll property for each layer, followed by move responses. But remember, for the mountain and sky layers, we need to adjust their Y position ranges to get smaller as they are further away. We can experiment with different values and use a dramatically smaller Y range for the sky layer to create a more realistic depth effect. It's important to note that there's no right or wrong value to use for the Y range, as long as we follow the rule of having further elements move slower. Take the time to adjust the animation to achieve the desired effect. Let's see how it looks like. Let's move on to the second section where we want to make the content appear when we scroll to a certain point. Unlike the hero section, the interactions in this section will only happen once. If you scroll up, the content won't disappear. We'll put the range trigger in practice for this. 
Unlike the hero section, this interaction is one time and the content won't disappear when we scroll back up. The range trigger fires only once when a layer's property falls within a specific range, but it won't fire if the property goes out of the range. This property of the range trigger is the reason the content won't disappear when we scroll up again. In order to make the content of section 2 show up when the user scrolls to a certain point, the first step is to hide all the content in that section by setting its opacity to zero. Then, a range trigger should be added to the scroll container with the scroll property selected as it is the property that determines when the content should be displayed. The range should be set to greater than or equal to 600, but this value can be adjusted as you see fit. Finally, an opacity response should be added to image 1. With its opacity set to 100 to make it visible when the user scrolls to the designated range. Now, when we scroll down to a certain position, the image 1 will show up instantly due to the range trigger we added earlier. Let's finish up the other elements using the same steps. If you want all the content to show up together, you can add more opacity responses to control them under the same range trigger. But if you want them to show up one by one like I did, you can set up different ranges for each element. Let's review our final result and the difference between the chain and range triggers. The chain trigger controls one layer's property with another, like in the hero section, where all the elements move simultaneously as we scroll. On the other hand, the range trigger fires only once when the layer's property falls into a specific range and doesn't fire again when it moves out of the range, as in the second section where the content appears only when we scroll down but remains visible when we scroll up. In just a few simple steps, using the chain and range triggers, we were able to create fluid animations that respond to the user's interactions. Now you're ready to take your designs to the next level. See you in the next one.